In this video, we experiment to find out if we can dip our toe into the fine art style of photography by using very, very cheap filters. And when I say cheap filters, I really do mean cheap filters. These cost less than five pound each. Bit of a spoiler alert for you. Yes, you can. So if you fancy dipping your toe into the fine art style of photography, then this video is for you. Also coming up in the video, I have a companion element backpack to give away currently priced at 380 euros so this is going to make somebody a decent a very decent a superb christmas present all that coming up in this video so this video is all about taking long exposures at the seaside using cheap filters when i say cheap filters i really really do mean cheap filters but these filters have a little bit of a backstory attached to them interesting hi guys and welcome to this week's video so look where i am i'm at mary shell not been here for a while just thought i'd nip along on a sunday morning on this fine fine morning to experiment with these cheap filters um, so first of all the elephant in the room this weather when i checked it last night it said cloudy with sunny intervals hmm. but of course weather conditions like this or lighting conditions like this or just conditions in general like this are very conducive with fine art photography so i suppose this is much better than a, a cloudy day with sunny intervals i'm guessing right it's high tide so i better crack on but before i crack on let me explain to you all about these filters there's a funny story attached to these filters before we come on to these filters let me just explain to you the funny story attached to these very very cheap filters I was running a uh, workshop in Glencoe in February of this year and we were at a certain location and we were taking pictures and somebody in the group said oh somebody's obviously dropped a set of filters because there's a full pack of filters lying on the grass right where we were taking photographs so I obviously spoke to the group and nobody from the group owned a set of newer newer however you pronounce that filters so I just said to the group member well just keep hold of them and it looks like you've gained yourself a free set of filters anyway long story short I was there again in October, went to the same location on another workshop and lo and behold, the set of filters that somebody found in February were still lying there on the grass. So whoever found them decided, oh well, maybe somebody will come back for them, so we'll just leave them on the grass. Um, I can't believe that, they, that they, they, they've still been there all year. Um, testament to the location I was at, I'm first of all thinking, by the way, if you think these are your filters just just email me and tell me where you thought you lost them and i'll post them to you you can have them back i've got no need to keep them no desire to keep them but i thought what a great test what a great example let's try these filters out and see if they're any good well first of all let's look at them they are 77 mil which is handy because mine are 77 mil um, that's an nd2 an ND4 and an ND8 and a UV filter I mean UV filters so an ND2 an ND4 and ND8 bear in mind when these manufacturers create these it, it, you, you usually have to divide them by three so an ND8 for instance let's say roughly two and a half stops so it's not it's not fantastic if I'm honest um, they're not going to stop down the light too much but if you imagine two and a half stops of light on an 8 or an ND8 and an ND4, just a stop and a third. So realistically, three, maybe four stops of light. Well, that's enough. It certainly is enough, especially on a day like today, to try this experiment out. I'm just, just interested about the glass, really. I'm interested to find out if they offer a color cast and if they're any good. I bet these things probably, probably cost about 15 pound if that. So 
So let's talk you through my camera setup. First of all, I'm trying to encourage the longest shutter speed that I can. So this is my workflow. Well, first of all, camera into manual, super important. ISO, let's adjust our ISO first. So I need the smallest number. My camera will go down to ISO 50. Next is my aperture. Now, remember I'm trying to achieve the longest shutter speed I can. So in terms of aperture, I want to close that hole right up. Close that hole right up. So I'm going to go for F20. I'm really, really comfortable at F20. So now at ISO 50, F20. Now I'm going to activate my light meter. I'll bring up my histogram on my screen. And now I'm going to slow my shutter speed right down and push it as far as I feel comfortable. And at the moment, I've got a one second exposure. So in these conditions, ISO 50, F20, I can still manage a second exposure. Next, let's focus. The focus on Mary Shell, and what I tend to do then is switch my focus in on, onto manual. But okay, so let's just recap then. Camera's in manual, ISO 50, aperture is closed right down to F20, uh, and I'm managing to gain, without any filters on the front of my camera lens, a one second exposure. Set my timer to a two second delay, one, two, and it takes the picture, yeah that looks very nice looks very very nice indeed right okay so now let's add these filters and let's see how much light we can actually reduce falling onto the sensor which in turn then will encourage a longer shutter speed well first of all this is an ND8 now in case you didn't know um, you have to divide it by three to find out how many stops of light it reduces. So an ND8, it's a bit weird how they actually, I don't know why they don't just say a one stop or a two stop. Obviously some manufacturers, some companies do, but more often than not, they'll just advertise them as an ND2, ND4, ND8 for instance. So this is an ND8. So in theory, two stops of light would be an ND6, and then that's two thirds. So that's two stops and two thirds. And if you didn't know what that means, one stop equals three clicks. So if your camera set in increments of thirds, then it's simply three clicks. So in other words, my shutter speed at the moment is on one second. So if I slow my shutter speed down, one, two, three, obviously it then doubles it to two seconds. That equals one stop. One, two, three again, double it, that's two stops. And now one, two, so two stops and two thirds. So in essence, that's eight clicks. And that offers me currently a six second exposure. Let's just press the button and see how that looks. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any degradation or I'm looking for any quality that might drop off because of using cheap glass. And also I'm looking for vignetting and also things like color cast can be an issue as well. And let's press the play button on there and that <laughs> actually looks pretty good that looks very very good so two stops let's just zoom in and have a look at that that's pretty impressive two stops and two thirds so for argument's sake let's round it up that's three stops of light and i'm very happy with those results but now i'm going to push it what about now we've got an nd4 which is as another stop and a third So let's add, let's see if we can add a stop and a third or an ND4 onto the front of my ND8. Okay, so now that's reduced the light falling onto the sensor by a stop and a third. So a stop is three clicks. So I'm gonna slow my shutter speed down now. One, two, three, that's one stop. And a third is another click. And if you look at your histogram on the back of your camera, you can see that it's in exactly the same place as it was when we originally set the camera up. And that's given me 15 seconds. Let's press the button and see how that looks. Again, there's bound to be some fall off with quality now. Well, in theory, there's bound to be some fall off with quality because we're now putting two cheap bits of glass together. Well, that's the theory. And of course, because now we're bulking the end of the lens out as well, there's always that danger of vignetting occurring. 
and to be fair that looks really really impressive now i also don't mind if there's a little bit of color cast on there as well it didn't oh, jesus <laughs> it really doesn't bother me if there's a little bit of color cast on there as well because ultimately i want to make sure that the picture looks good after post-production i mean my lee filter they're expensive filters and they offer color cast they offer me a blue color cast but again that's just something you either fix in post-production or you learn to love and to be fair with my my lee 10 stop filters and my 15 stop filters it's something that i tend to love i like the blue tint to it but i must admit that looks pretty damn impressive wow i bet this set probably costs less than 20 quid what a great way to learn what a great way to learn maybe you're thinking about dipping your toe in this this field of long exposure photography maybe you've never tried it before or maybe your budget's a bit tight but seriously that looked really 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 impressive all right okay so i now want to grab a few different uh, compositions from around and we'll see overall how they look when we're back at the studio i tried quite a few different compositions and all in all the pictures on the back of the camera look exceptional absolutely fantastic but of course it's not what they look like on the back of the camera that count is what they look like after they've been post-processed just want to take 30 seconds out if i may to give this company a huge mention they're called companion i think that's how you pronounce it but they are a german-based camera bag manufacturer and they quite literally just reached out and asked if they could send me one of their camera bags and if i'm honest it's probably because they've just seen the last few videos that i've made whereby my old camera bag that's about 10 years old has fallen apart and i think they wanted to try and do something with my image <laughs> good luck with that but no on a serious note they just sent me this camera bag no strings attached they've not asked me to review it they've not asked me to big it up they've not asked me to do anything and on top of that they sent me two so hence the reason why i've decided to give one away you can have the black one or the brown one, it's entirely up to you, but if you want the black one, I have used it for a week, so yeah, that's your call. I don't have to review it, by the way, I'm not gonna review it, so that's not what this video is all about. I'll leave links to their website below. There is a fantastic um, video. There's a guy on there that explains all about this backpack and how good it is and all the picture. Anyway, you, you get the picture. Just go on to their website and have a look and it really is 379 euros it's a it's a good good bit of kit so i am eternally grateful to you guys for reaching out and i'll just thank you very much indeed for your kind generosity so the question is how a bit noisy how can you get your hands on this brand spanking new dish delish um backpack well uh it's going to be as simple as this Next week, I'm creating a tips video. I'll release it the week after, so it'll be kind of the end of year special. But it's a tips video um, to share with everybody in YouTube world, but not my tips. They're going to be your tips. So what I'd like you to do, if you want to be a recipient of this camera bag, then all I'm going to ask you to do is simply email me one photography-related tip. It could be serious, it could be fun. It could be one you live your life by, it could be one that you pass on to others, or it could be one that you've just recently learned yourself. But you know, I'm gonna create that video. Hopefully we can all share in it and maybe all learn something about the world of photography. Um, yeah, I enjoy making those videos. By the way, I read out your tip and I'll give you my in interpretation of what I think of that tip. Yeah, so whether I like it, whether I don't like it, whether I use it, whether I don't use it, or whether I think it's rubbish or whether I think it's funny, anything. But it's not a competition as such. All I'm going to do is everybody who features in the video remember they're your tips not mine everybody who features in the video their names will go in a hat and i'll just randomly draw a name out the name that comes out will be the recipient of this camera bag and hopefully i can get it posted to you guys in time for christmas what a fantastic christmas present that would be i'll leave all the links below like i said serious or funny doesn't really matter just participate and send me an email with a good tip on it. Cheers to these guys, by the way. Cheers, thanks again. 
Right then, well, it's all well and good looking at the images on the back of your camera and thinking, wow, that's, you know, they're splendid. But of course, I'm sure we've all been, you know, fooled by that many a times in the past. So the proof is in the pudding. Well, I've just placed these images into Photoshop and the first set of images you're going to look at now are flat profiled images. In other words, they're raw images and they are completely untouched. So let's look at the first one. The first image that I took here is over a one second exposure without any filters. If I have a quick look here, so let's zoom in and you can clearly see everything is nice and sharp. You know, it was a miserable day, but everything is nice and sharp and as expected. Now, we added the first filter, which was an ND8, which is two stops and two thirds. Well, from that, we managed then to attain a six second exposure. And looking at that straight off the bat, you can clearly see it's, you know, it's a lot softer than the original. Let's zoom in again and let's make a, a direct comparison between the original and you know the, the image over a six second period that actually had that first cheap filter applied which was an nd8 we then went one stage further and we added another nd4 grad which is another stop and a third of light extra which we managed to um, or by applying both we managed then to achieve a 15 second exposure now there clearly is um, a depreciation in image quality, of course there is, but it's much better than I ever expected. It really is. I'm very, very impressed with that. But of course, I've said it, you know, countless times in the past. It's not about how your image looks pre-post-processing, it's how they look after they've been post-processed. So once again, if we have a quick look at this image, that's over a 15 second exposure, having two cheap filters placed on the front element of my lens and that's the difference sharp pretty damn soft sharp and pretty damn soft but let's look what the image looks like after post-production boom that's pretty impressive that is pretty pretty impressive so to summarize then these damn filters cost less than a bottle of Budweiser each or around about the price of a bottle of Budweiser. Um, so if you fancy dipping your toe in this wonderful genre called fine art photography, if you're not sure whether you'd like it or not, but you just, maybe you want something to do on the weekend, for God's sake, it's, it, it's nothing. As an outlay, it's nothing just to give it a go. And clearly, yes, <laughs> All right, the old adage still applies. You get what you pay for, but at the end of the day, that would look good on a website. That would look good on a really nice print. That's going to look good on an office wall. It's all about the post process. And if you're interested on uh, to find out how I post process this image, by the way, um, I've just released a seven part masterclass in post production through Photoshop and Lightroom. And I'll leave a link to that down below. So there you go, in conclusion, yes, you get what you pay for, but yes, you definitely can go out and dip your toe in this market or this wonderful genre called fine art photography. If these are yours, by the way, let me know and I'll send them back to you. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you think the content is worthy of it. Cheers.